Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is Doctor Who Nemesis by the BBC and Gale Force 9. This plays two to four players, takes 45 to 90 minutes to play, and it's for ages 14 and up. And in the game, Doctor Who Nemesis, you are playing as one of the four main nemesis of Doctor Who. And of course, each of the four main factions have two unique bad guy leaders. You'll select which side of the game board you want to play on. Do you want to play as one of the Weeping Angel leaders? Do you want to play as the Masterful Master? Or should we flip over this again? You can go ahead and play as the Scheming Master. Uh, everybody's going to get their own game board, their own character figure that you'll be using, a certain number of power, as well as two unique doctors that will be added to their deck. And everybody's going to get their own unique deck, and you're going to be attempting to complete schemes. There's going to be a bunch of schemes that come out, some personal and some public, and whoever's able to complete the scheme uh, that is either public or their own first is the winner of the game. Will you be able to compete against these other masters in this delightful area control combat game that's all involving going ahead and trying to complete your main objective? Find out in the game Doctor Who Nemesis as I explain how to set it up, how to play, and of course my review. To begin setup for the game, first determine the number of players. Then keep each of those players one unique player board and let them select the side. They can choose one or the other, doesn't matter which one, they're both unique. Then give them their character miniature or their standee and place it in the middle of the game board on the character's portrait. Then shuffle up the doctor tokens and place two of them on the TARDIS symbols in the middle of their game board. After that, give each player two power and place it on their power slot on their game board as well. Each of the different factions are going to have their own unique faction die or dice, set that next to their player board. As well as 27 cards of the symbol on the board. So on the board here I have this Weeping Angel symbol. I'm going to go through the decks and find the 27 cards in the top left hand corner that have this symbol and set them aside. Then, based on the side of the board that you selected, go ahead and choose the five cards that are going to have that symbol as well. In this case, I have the darker symbol, so I'll take these five and I'll add it to my deck. Finally, you'll be taking cards from the hero deck or the doctor deck. Uh, there are many, many different doctors, and you're going to look at the doctors that represent on your game board. In this case, it could be like the 11th and the 12th doctor, the 4th and the 5th, and you'll go through the deck and you'll find the character and you'll add it to your deck of cards as well, to where eventually you should have about 40 cards in your deck. Once you've got your doctor's cards, your main leader cards, and the base set of cards, you will have your main game deck and you can go ahead and shuffle it and then you'll draw five cards unless you are playing as the blue character then you might be able to draw six instead after that you're pretty much ready to go you can go ahead and set aside all the rest of the cards that you're not utilizing and make sure you have a spot for all of the plot and power tokens that you're using throughout the game trying to achieve your schemes and that's pretty much it so before we get into how to play the game fully i want to go over a few things about the game boards and your deck of cards each player's got their game board. It's gonna represent their special ability, their power for that specific board, and of course, the four different symbols of card types that are gonna represent in their deck. So in this case here, I've got the two different angels and those two different doctors based on these two little symbols here. Then, I'm also going to see this game board is gonna have four locations. In this case here, the Weeping Angels has Hunting Grounds, Byzantium Steriliner, and the Maze of the Dead, as well as the Crack. These are four areas, and each of them, each of these locations is gonna have two actions apiece. There can be more actions in an area as the game progresses, but as it starts, just as the board has shown, you're gonna have two actions for each space. You're going to have a constant space on the bottom of your game board, and schemes on the top. Schemes is where you place the cards that will hopefully allow you to win the game, usually involving some way of obtaining plots, and once you have achieved a certain number of plots, you instantly will win. Constants are cards that will stay in effect throughout the game and help you achieve your victory, whether it be from your doctor cards, whether it be from your main cards from the deck, or the specific player that you're playing as. And also we have the cards, and there's card types. The first one, uh, the most unique one I suppose, is going to be the Doctors. Each of all the 13 original Doctors are in this game, and they each have four cards. Each of them also is going to come with a scheme, a way to win, and unique cards that are going to be battling against not only you, but the other players. But you'll be using these cards offensively. So that when you add these cards to your deck and you draw them, most of the time you're not going to be adding them to your own location. You're going to be wanting to push them out on other uh, enemies or other nemesis's locations to hinder them throughout the game. 
Okay, so that's pretty much what I want to talk about as far as the board goes. The cards, there's a bunch of unique cards in the game. The top right explains what they do. Every card of yours, your own personal cards, are called Nemesis cards. All of the Doctor cards are called Hero cards. They might be yours in ownership, but they're not working for you. They can work against you as well. Each of the Nemesis cards have a different type. It could be an instant card, it could be a moment card, it could be a minion card. Like, for instance, the Spy Master is a minion, it's also considered a master and a character. Or you might get cards that are going to be constant effects that come into play and stay in play, schemes that come into play and stay into play, as well as equipment that you can attach to certain characters. And in a lot of cases, characters like the Ashad are going to have a bunch of minions um, that are going to be giving you bonuses uh, or uh, uh, upgrades. So like this in 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 integrated cyber gun, you can attach two characters. It is a constant upgrade, but in order to have that upgrade, you need to have a minion that can support it. And it might be something like this Cyberman here. This is a one Cyberman that could be equipped with an integrated cyber gun. So there's a lot of different cards in this game. So let's now go over the phase of play. It's turn-based. My turn, your turn, so on and so forth, all the way around in a clockwise order. And there's a turn summary. The first thing that happens is the start step. Basically, anything you see on your game board, around your game board, or something that is involved with you, if it has a start step, you are going to do that thing. It could be to draw an extra card, gain a power, gain a plot if something happens, or in some function there's something that benefits you, or discarding cards to draw cards, all kinds of things. If you have no start step, you'll just simply skip that and you'll move on to the control step. The control step is very easy as well. You have your standee. It starts on this middle location here. So this Weeping Angels is gonna be here and the Master Foley Master uh, is going to be here. I am going to move this guy to any of my four locations here during the control step. So if I wanted to move it to the crack, I'd move it to the crack. When you move to a location, the next time you move to a new location, it may never be the same location and you're never gonna go back to the middle of the board. So I would go to the Hunting Grounds, I would go to the Byzantium Starliner, or the Maze of the Dead after going to the Crack, but never staying on the Crack. So I'd be moving here. I could go back to the Crack if I wanted to on the next turn. And that's how the control works. This is going to set you up for actions after the next step. The next step is going to be the Minion Step. If you have in your hand, because you're going to start with five cards at the beginning of the game, unless you're the blue character, in which case you might start with six, you can play one minion down in any of your four locations. And the way that works is pretty simple. You actually would move this aside, and you're going to have locations on the sides of your game board. So if I wanted to place a minion down on the hunting grounds, I place it over here, or on the Byzantium Starliner over here, and so on and so forth. So I look at my hand. Do I have a minion like this Weeping Angel here? I do. I can choose to play it down in any of the four locations. I would just simply set it down next to my game board in some way where all players can see. If I don't have a minion in my hand, but I have one on the field, I could choose to move this minion. Or if I did have a minion in my hand, but I also had a minion on the field, I could choose to move this minion. I can move it to any other location, including my opponent's locations as well. So I could move my Weeping Angel over to, let's just say, this guy Davros. I could move it to the Occupied Earth location on his game board, which can then set up for some interesting play, which I'll talk about in my review how all of that works. But I'm just mentioning how this works. You're going to be able to play a minion down into one of your locations, or move a minion from one of your locations to somebody else's location or one of your other locations. After your minion step is done, you'll move to your action or your conflict step, sorry, conflict step, which doesn't happen early in the game. It happens kind of later, so you kind of skip this for your first few rounds. But if you have a unit and somebody else has a unit in the same area, or you have a unit and there's a doctor or many doctors as well as companions in that area, you can start conflict. And there's a whole explanation as to how conflict works in the back of the book. And in fact, you'll be using this to go, on, go through the steps as you understand the game. Basically, you'll be committing your power from the game board, plus you'll be hiding power and revealing it, as well as using the power that your minions have and any bonuses they might have, and revealing, rolling this die, as well as your opponent rolling a die, and checking the difference in strength. And if you win, you'll defeat all of your opponent's units. You can capture doctors and defeat their uh, assistants, etc., etc. And that's how combat's going to work. But you'll choose one of those locations, as long as you have a minion there and somebody else does, and you can start a conflict and determine who has the higher strength, and then and defeat those units in those locations. The next step is the action step, and that's where you're going to be, do any actions on your location. As well as if you have a card that has an action as well, you can do that action as well. You can do cards like 
or actions like playing a nemesis moment card. So if you have a nemesis slash moment in your hand, like it would say, for instance, this one here, nemesis moment paradox, lost time. When you play it, you do a thing, or if you have the blink action, you can do this thing instead. And it has kind of, there's like options for how your moments work. They're kind of like sorcery spells in magic. You could also play two hero cards. Heroes, like I said before, are basically the doctors and or their partners or maybe their moments, etc., etc. You can play one of these guys and it'll help you, hopefully, or hinder your opponents throughout the game because you can play them on your opponent's spaces and kind of combat other players. And you'll do both or all of the actions that you can possibly do on that location. If somebody else has a character on your location, it's going to be occupied and you'll lose one action. So if you had three actions to do there, you only get to do two. If there's a doctor on that location, you will lose two actions. So in most cases, you will have zero actions to do there until that doctor has been captured. Um, or of course, if you have three actions, you'll be able to, to do one of them. After you've done your actions, which usually can involve drawing cards or playing cards from your hand based on what there are here, then you'll move on to the end step. And the end step is basically anything that has an end step trigger will trigger. Then you will go ahead and discard any excess power. So if you have more than five power in your little power pool here, you'll discard down to five. You can discard any number of cards from your hand and then draw back up to your maximum hand size and then you're going to pass. After you've passed, it goes to the next player's turn and it rinses and repeats. Now, how do you win? Well, in the game there are schemes, and when you get them, as long as it allows you to play a scheme, like playing two Nemesis cards or play a scheme card, etc., etc., you'll drop it on the front of your game board. If it's a scheme that you own, that will tell you how you win. If it is a hero scheme, that is played for everyone to utilize, and whoever gets that scheme's victory condition first is the winner. It functions kind of like Flux. And then, that's the basic idea. There's going to be multiple different schemes out for each individual nemesis, and of course, doctor schemes might pop out, and you have ways to win in that way, as well as there are two unique cards in your deck that will allow you to win the game instantly if you have captured any of the two doctors in the game. If you have four players, there are a total of eight doctors, so it's not impossible to get those guys as opposed to doing your main objective or your main schemes for each of your characters. That's basically the game Doctor Who Nemesis. I'll tell you what I think about it in my review. We'll cover any little bits of combat I found interesting and the different characters, all that good stuff. But I think you understand what, what the game's about now. This is actually a really unique game. It has a little bit of a taste of a few games I've played before. Flux is the one that comes to mind, as well as a few light area control games, in the fact that there are schemes that come out. And each of the different of these Nemesis characters are gonna have their own scheme cards, the deck is gonna have its own scheme, and the doctors that you select will have their schemes as well. So you'll at least have four different ways to win, and at least two of them, they're gonna be specific to your character, whether it be the Master or Davros or one of the Weeping Angels or Ashad, etc., etc. And so you're going to be combating the other opponents by controlling their game board, lowering their actions, defeating them and doctors and, of course, the people that work with the doctors, as well as trying to complete your objectives. Weeping Angels, for instance, they like to gain a lot of power and sacrifice that power to gain plot. And if they have enough plots based on their scheme, they can win. Characters like uh, Ashad are looking to control the Doctor's mind, thusly defeating Doctors is very important, or Doctors and their characters, the characters that work with them is very important, beating and winning in combat, etc, etc. Characters like this one over, uh, over here, the Masterful Master, he likes to place out lots of Masters. There's lots of Masters in this deck here. The scheme is something like putting out a certain number of Masters uh, in play and having them in play when you have that specific card in play. Plot is the typical way to win the game. There'll be ways in which you can gain plots, whether it be placing characters in certain areas, like Davros wants to have certain types of their da Dalek characters in certain areas on their game board, and they'll gain plots as they move their main character to that location, and they'll gain the win or the victory once they have gained enough plot from having those characters control enough locations on the game board. That being said, there's a lot of ways to win and a lot of ways to change how the victory conditions go. The doctors themselves have their own ways of winning too. One doctor's win condition is pretty simple. It is have four instant cards in your hand and four instants in your discard pile. 
reveal the cards in your hand, and you win the game. And that will work well with certain characters. And hopefully you get those characters to kind of coincide with the doctors. Using doctors and of course the, their assistants slash partners, um, their companions, to be placed out on the different locations of other players' boards is imperative. It's ways of messing with their opponents, making players reshuffle and deal out their hands again, making other doctors come to the, the, the aid of their assistants, etc. will move them over and kind of block off areas and control your other opponents and how they can play the game. There's also a bunch of minions that are going to be moving out. There's some light combat that will initiate when players kind of control or try and attempt to mess with your game board. And it's an all-out offensive versus a bunch of the bad guys. It reminds me in little ways about the 007 game that has you are basically fighting as 007's nemesis is kind of going up against each other. It's a little bit of area control in that game. This kind of feels like that as well. And this also has that area control style of flux with unique win conditions. The game can last for a bit of time or it can be cut short with a player getting one of those instant victory win conditions. Let's talk about the, the, the quality of the components and the art. So this is going to have a ton of your favorite Doctor Who moments with all of the different characters, all the different doctors, all of the main bad guys that you're going to be utilizing with front and back boards, which is excellent. All the components are very nice. The dice are nice as well, and they're etched. And each of the nemesis are going to have their own die with their own etched symbols of those die that they're going to be utilizing. Other tokens are nice as well. They work exactly as you'd expect to tokens to work. And the cards are excellent. Really high quality cards, nice to shuffle. These will last you a long time. Overall component quality and the art, the design and style is wonderful. Having each of the different unique Doctor Who uh, licensed uh, characters as well as locations kind of added to the game boards adds for a little bit of flair and style. Each of the doctors has their own style of how they like to win the game or mess with the bad guys. And of course, all the bad guys have their own unique style as how they want to scheme and plan and control the world or mess with the doctor's mind or have enough of their characters spread out across the multiverse. And so they all have this own unique and interesting feel to where every time you play this game, you're going to have different doctors, a different leader, and the main game deck, which can change your style of play each and every time. This is a really, really well done game. Probably one of my favorites in, in quite a while from... Uh, Gale Force 9. It's just done very well. The the beautiful box art. I just I just simply love this game. I had a lot of fun with it and everybody at the table enjoyed it as well. One little thing is the game can end abruptly. You might have the best made out plans in the history of Doctor Who and all of a sudden somebody just has a way to one up you and your style is going to be different each and every time, which is good, but also you might not be expecting that. So I would always strongly suggest you go through your deck and understand what the deck is all about before just simply playing, because other players might be able to do their schemes a bit better than you based on the cards in their deck. Overall though, Doctor Who Nemesis is a great game and it's one I'm gonna be keeping. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Doctor Who. If you're interested in picking up the game, there's a link down below in the description. Every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. PST, we do a whatnot stream where we sell games, show off other games, and we play Plinko. You can also join us on our other stream on Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST, uh, where we go on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch and show you games. In fact, we played this game uh, this last weekend and you can see how the game is played and whether or not it's going to be for you. Like, comment, and subscribe if we've earned your subscription. If you've seen this, this channel's videos more than once and you haven't pushed the button, it does greatly help us out here and wants us to continue helping make videos to determine if these games are right for you. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to entering the mind of a nemesis with you next time.